everybody video here for you today now I had a message about a week ago that reminded me of a site I looked into maybe six months ago and never made a video about one thing I have tried to do in ancient America here is not only document the mound builder sites but pre Clovis sites places that date before the Clovis were supposedly entering North America um, I have talked about the Cactus Hill and Topper site I have talked about the Page Ladson site in Florida the Galt site in Texas, maybe 16, 18,000 years old. I have talked, of course, about the Cerruti site in California, Paisley Caves up here in the Northwest, Sheridan Cave uh, last week in Ohio. But there, uh, the Meadowcroft, uh, Meadowcroft Rock Shelter, I believe that is the name of it in Pennsylvania. So I have tried to keep this part of the series going, talking about these deep history places. And this place today, pretty interesting, so why don't we go down to it. It's in Washington. This discovery, I think, was made in 1977. This is called the Manus Mastodon Site, and it's right down here. This is Seclum, Washington, and let's go down and take a look here. One of the more important finds in very early North American history it was made right down here. Here's the site today. They have a little marker here on August 8th, 1977. The landowner was digging out some peat down here. He wanted to save it. It was valuable to mix in with poor soil for gardens. And you can read right there, Manus Mastodon. But this is the area about 43 years ago. Two mammoth tusks were found. Other discoveries that put humans at the same area, the same location, and at the same time. Here is the historical marker, Register National Historic Place, Manus Mastodon Site. Entered into the National Register of Historic Places on March 21, 1978. Here is a look back when they were excavating this area where these Macedon tusks and other things were discovered here. Evidence of human activity and this dated back about 13,800 years ago, about a thousand years earlier than the Younger Dryas boundary at 12,800 years roughly. But here is a pic, it says, Emmanuel Manny Manus and his wife Claire stand by two massive Mastodon tusks on their property in a Gazette photo from August 17, 1977. The photo caption reads, wait until the tooth fairy tries to slip one of these out from under the pillow. They were dug up in a peat bog by Manny Manus, owner of Seclum's Bowling Lanes. Manny was digging a stock pond at the time of the find. Now his wife Claire wants him to find the rest of the parts. At the time of the picture, they were attempting to get information about preserving the tusks in case they begin to deteriorate now that they were out of the ground. So here is a pic from a newspaper article coming from, what, about 44 years ago? Once again, this is one of many videos that has evidence of people here before the Clovis. And this is an important uh, story that came out last fall. Clovis made stone tools for only around 300 years. And that ended, they say, 12,750 years ago. There was no more Clovis tools made after that. And that is right at the Younger Dryas boundary. So did that event of 12,800 years ago, roughly, did that wipe out the Clovis pretty much? So there's no more evidence of them existing? Well, that's the way it appears. There was other large mammals found here at the Manus site. There was caribou, I believe bison also found, but here's an archeology span student looking at the jaw of the Macedon. And this is what makes it very interesting. Here is a close up and an X-ray. And there was a sharpened bone projectile point embedded in one of the bones of the Macedon. So, this came actually from another Macedon. It was sharpened down to a point and embedded. But people said, the naysayer said, well, you can't prove that humans made this projectile point. So you really can't prove that humans were hunting these Macedons here almost 14,000 years ago. But, I mean, who else would have done it? Would a bear sharpened a spear point? And, I mean, the naysayers really come up with some lame excuses why we shouldn't believe some of the history. But this was also doubted by the naysayers. They said, well, maybe the carbon dating is wrong. And in 2011, this was reinvestigated. 
and this spear point and everything else. And there was actually growth found around this spear point, so they figured that the mastodon lived a while with this embedded in it. But in 2011, they restudied this. New findings came out, and they verified what was found back in the late 1970s. Humans were here. This mastodon died about 13,800 years ago, and there is about a 150-year window on each side of that. Here is a look at what this animal looked like that was discovered in Sequim, Washington. And if I'm mis mispronouncing that, I'm sure somebody will let me know. But it says here, the Manus Mastodon was an arthritic old fellow with highly worn teeth, who was about 45 years old. And if it was old and arthritic, maybe it was just easy prey for these early hunters. But it says here, a guy named Gustafson led the field crew. His crew were excited by the prophet probability this was an early archaeological site they quickly discovered that they were first excavating only half the mastodon and not only that but logically speaking the wrong half the mastodon had died fallen on its left side so that the right hand side should have been lying topmost yet those bones were missing altogether the gusses and crew imagined that a pleistocene people had butchered only the right side of the mastodon and abandoned the left they would have probably carried the meat and bones a bit northward, sure enough, not far away. They found it. The bones were not properly aligned like the left side, but broken, scattered, and scored, as if the top portion of the carcass had indeed been butchered. And here is a look back at the archaeological work done here. About 44 years ago, and here is the couple that made this discovery, and they seem to be very interested in what they found. Now I'm just going to play here a one minute clip. Claire is still alive and she did a little interview. So let's just listen to a portion of that right now. We're only here a short period of time, but this old animal has been here, well, almost 14,000 years ago. On August 8, 1977, Claire's late husband, Emmanuel Manis, was digging a pond on his property located just outside of Squim when he hit something that he initially thought was a rotting log. I found these mammoth tusks. He figured they were mammoth tusks. You got to remember that. It didn't take long for archaeologists to figure out that these were the remains of a mastodon, one that died 13,800 years ago. And as if this finding wasn't exciting enough, it also led to proof that man was in North America much earlier than originally thought after an unusual discovery was made on one of the extinct animal's rib bones. It's a a bone with another bone that penetrates that rib bone about three quarters of an inch it comes to a point well that they got really excited about that because that indicated that perhaps man had something to do with this animal that piece of bone ended up being the tip of a man-made spear a weapon that probably led to the demise of this particular animal. That this is one of the most important archaeological discoveries in the world today. Now what do you do when you hear something like that? Besides that, when you, we were so excited and so interested in what we found in the front yard and what, what has become of it. This finding contradicted a previous notion that the earliest people to arrive in North America were the Clovis people. They were believed to have arrived on our continent about 300 years after this mastodon was killed by humans. I thought that was a cool thing to include, hearing from Claire. I will leave the link for that full video below. It's almost four minutes. But here is her late husband, Manny. And this is what he initially found, the mammoth tusks. And here is them digging at the site, and this was below a layer of ash from the Mount Mazama eruption, the one that formed Crater Lake about 7,700 years ago, and deposited many feet of ash all the way up into Washington. Probably the worst eruption, or one of the worst we've had in the last 10,000 years. Here is some artifacts, part of a tusk with a scrawl in it. Evidence of humans. Here are some worn teeth from the Macedon. Here is where that uh, projectile point was embedded in the Macedon rib, and here is them working at the site back in the 1970s. I think this is an important place to talk about. Nearby Paisley Caves went back over 14,000 years. We are just rewriting history as we go. 
But here is a book by Carl Gustin. He is the one from Washington State University, I believe, that worked on this site. And here is a book, The Man, the Manus Macedon Site, An Adventure in Prehistory. And it looks like this was written with the help of Claire Manus, who we heard from just a little bit ago. About a year and a half ago, I made a video really doubting the hypothesis that early humans here hunted all these megafauna to extinction, really in a geological moment. Some of these had been around for millions of years, so that is still an open question. I think there's little evidence supporting this hypothesis, but that is a video for another day, and a video I've already done. I think this was a very important thing to report on today. There's not many sites that we have that are pre-Clovis, and that shows evidence of humans and these megafauna at the same site. But here is a diagram, and here is the location where they found that projectile point embedded in the bone. There is a close-up of it. And here is some radiocarbon dating work that was verified in 2011. And the window here is from 13,860 years ago to 13,763 years ago. So they just narrowed that down to 13,800 years ago. But I will leave this link below if you want to look into this a little more. Pretty fascinating. How far back do humans go on this continent? Is there even a date we can limit it to? I'm not sure. That's my video on the Manus Macedon sites, one of many pre-Clovis sites that were just discovered by accident. Maybe we should start looking further down in the ground on these archaeological projects. Maybe we will find more of this deep history that seems to be spread all the way across the ancient United States, but that is the location right down here of a pretty amazing find made in 1977. Not many of them in the United States that have humans and megafauna at the same site and interacting, but that is a video I thought I'd make today. Some very deep history. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.